For this project, I'm going to show you how to build a custom rocket launching blast pad. You'll find these don't cost much to make, but they're still impressively durable, portable, and will launch a rocket any angle you point it. Let's start this project with some common sprinkler parts. These are 3 quarter inch PVC fittings and you should be able to find them all at your nearest hardware store. We'll also need a quarter inch by one and a half inch fender washer and some quarter inch by one and a half inch hex head leg screws. In reality, you'll only need one, but it's good to have a couple spares on hand just in case you want them. Now the body of our launch pad is made with three quarter inch PVC tubing and you'll need four pieces that are 12 inches long. These other 15 pieces are exactly two inches each and I cut mine from the leftover tubing so they didn't cost anything extra. Two inch tubes work really well for prototyping because as you can see, they'll join any three quarter inch fittings together in an instant. Ok, let's go ahead and dry fit all the pieces together, just to double check we have all the pieces we need at all the right measurements. When everything's assembled, the body of your launch pad should look something like this. Gluing any pieces together is completely optional, and in all honesty, you don't really need to. But just because we can, I'm going to use a little PVC glue to make a few parts on mine a little more permanent. I chose to glue the launch pad together in five separate segments like you see here, because this way it'll easily come apart so we can store it later when it's not being used. Now before we apply any glue, it's really important to make sure all the components are flat and aligned properly. The easiest way to do that is by pressing them down on the table. When you're confident you can keep them straight, go ahead and glue the components together in the usual way by following the directions on your can of PVC glue. And it's a really good idea to have some kind of paper or drop cloth covering your table because this chemical glue is nasty stuff and can eat the finish right off your work surface within seconds. Give the connections about 5 minutes to cure, then go ahead and fit the 5 segments back together to see how they look. Hopefully you got it right on the first try, because at this point, there's no going back. Now check out what we can do at the top. Push the head forward, then pull it all the way back, and swivel it around 360 degrees. If it does that, then congratulations, your swivel head is working, and you're ready for a blast pad. I went to a local thrift store and picked up a variety of different pot lids and serving plates for around 50 cents each, so I'm confident you can find something similar for around a dollar or less. Pot lids are an awesome choice because when the handles are removed, you can see there's already a hole drilled exactly in the center. But for mine, I'm going with this serving tray instead because I like the contour and look of it better, especially when it's flipped upside down. Now the blast pad needs a hole drilled in the center of the plate, so eyeball it as best you can, then drill a hole 3 16ths of an inch wide. We need to drill the same kind of hole through the top of the PVC cross as well, right in the center, because this is where the blast pad is going to get connected. And before going any further, let's just make sure this plate is actually going to work by setting the blast pad in position and securing it to the PVC assembly with one of the lag screws. The threads of the screw should bite tightly into the PVC, sucking the plate down against the plastic cross snugly enough that it won't move. But if for some reason you end up stripping the screw holes or just want it even more secure, you can still add another screw on either side by securing them into the cross beam below. Now that we know the lid fits, it's a really good idea to add a one and a half inch fender washer to the center of the blast pad because it's made of steel and it'll help dissipate the heat. Most pot lids are made of aluminum and there's a chance the blast from a rocket motor will burn a hole right through it, but a fender washer on the top will block the heat and solve the problem before it starts. With the screw and washer in place, mark a dot one and a half inches from the center and in line with one of the arms of the PVC cross underneath. This hole will be for the launch rod and before you drill it, take a good look at it from the side to make sure everything's in line and centered. You'll need to go all the way through the top and just a tiny bit into the bottom, but be very careful you don't go all the way through. If you did it right, you'll be able to push a stick or a rod through the hole and position it into the groove at the bottom, effectively locking it in place. The rod I'm using is a 3 16th inch by 4 foot steel rod found in the hardware aisle of the hardware store as well. Alright, the time has come to customize our launch pad with a paint job, and for that I'm using black and yellow paint to match the randomizer rocket that I'll show you how to build in another project video. Three coats of paint and 24 hours later, the launch pad is looking pretty awesome. And at this point, our blast pad is completely finished and ready for use. Setting up is as simple as inserting the guide rod and dropping a rocket into position. Here you can see the nozzle of the rocket lines up perfectly with the fender washer, and if that ever gets damaged for some reason, it's super cheap and easy to replace. Alright, to test it out, I took my system to a launch site and dropped one of my randomizer rockets into position. You can see with this design, the rocket easily cycles through a multitude of different angles and can rotate a full 360 degrees as well. That's awesome. The rail will even drop down to a flight angle of 0 degrees, and I'm not sure why you'd ever need to use that feature, but I'm just saying you could. I loaded my rocket with an SD's E96 black powder rocket motor, which you can see screws in at the bottom. And even blasting off with that much power, you'll notice the launch pad didn't even flinch. 
Your new launch pad should be durable enough to last indefinitely and withstand a lifetime of rocket launches. And when you're not out launching rockets, it'll come apart in seconds for easy storage or transportation. Well, now you know how to transform thrift shop pot lids and PVC sprinkler parts into a custom rocket launching blast pad that doesn't cost much to build, but it'll still be just as durable and effective as anything you'd buy at twice the price. By the way, it'll also be a nice complement to your homemade randomizer rocket, so if you want to make one of those, look for the project video on how I built mine. Well, that's it for now. If you like this project, perhaps you like some of my others. Check them out at thekingofrandom.com. Hey guys, this project was part of a design collaboration I did with my friends at sonicdad.com. Please check them out and subscribe to their YouTube channel. If you remember the collaboration we did last year with the Assassin's Micro Crossbow, then you'll understand why I chose Richie from the Sonic Dad team as my partner for building a rocket. He's a creative genius in all respects and has an amazing mind for thinking outside of the box. Together, Richie and I designed a really cool launch pad, the randomizer rocket, and a recovery parachute that all work impressively well. We've done around 50 launches so far, and he's already got detailed videos and instructions on how to make them at sonicdad.com. I highly recommend you support and subscribe to Sonic Dad because they're one of the channels I follow, and these guys have my highest respect. I know them personally, and they're on a mission to help people turn off the TV and go make something cool instead. Thank you for watching and supporting these projects. I appreciate you, and I'm excited to see you around for the next project video. I'll talk to you then.